Okay, our next set of videos is on free fall. And we obviously studied this last year. And um, so we, we've got free fall and projectile motion to finish up kinematics. And in, in some ways, maybe I shouldn't split them into two separate um, sets of notes because uh, projectile motion is just um, free fall with motion in the x direction added in. And this is, uh, in, in this set of notes, we're just going to be focused on objects falling uh, in the y direction. But I, I like to do it that way to kind of, you know, go from well, from one step to the next. So, anyways, um, to get to the definitions, an object is in free fall when the only force acting on it is gravity. So I'm kind of breaking um, my rule that I told you about a few videos ago when I said that I'm not going to discuss uh, things from other units uh, ahead of time. So I know that you know that free fall is um, the only force acting on something is gravity. But there's not really, um, and even though that is a, a force topic, I'm bringing in this idea of force because I know you know it from last year. There's not really a better way to say it um, without invoking force. So we're going to talk about it here. And I'm going to break my rule. So an object is in free fall when the only force acting on it is gravity. If any other force is acting on the object, it won't be in free fall. Okay? If gravity is the only force acting on it, that is free fall. So, some examples of objects that are in free fall. Um, probably the most obvious is something that is falling, something that is dropped from rest, or even thrown down once it is out of the, the hand or the whatever is making it um, pro uh, propelled downwards. So something dropping from rest is in taking this pen, dropping it, that pen, while it was out of my hand and before it hit the ground, or the table, is in free fall. However, that's not the only case where something can be in free fall. You could also have something uh, being thrown, or kicked, or launched. All of those, <clears throat> once the only force on the object is gravity, it is therefore in free fall at that point. Even if the object goes up first and then goes back down. Even when it's going up, that's still free fall because the only force on it is gravity. Now, while the pen is in my hand and while it's moving upwards in my hand, that is not free fall because my hand is exerting a normal force on the pen. But once it's out, then it's in free fall. Okay? Something that gets thrown, like a baseball, football, basketball, those uh, uh, objects, when they are just being acted on by gravity, are all in free fall. One last example that uh, people tend to forget sometimes. Satellites in orbit. Those are in free fall because what makes them go around the uh, Earth, even though they're not falling per se, they're not going towards Earth, they are only under the influence of gravity. Gravity keeps them in their orbits. Okay, So all these objects are examples of free fall. So when you, when you get a situation um, and you think it might be in free fall, you have to step back and ask yourself, are there any other forces acting on this object besides gravity? If there are, the object is not in free fall, and you cannot say that it has the acceleration uh, due to gravity that we've, that we've come to practice a lot. If gravity is the only force, then we can say the object is in free fall and proceed from there. What we're going to do right now, because I think you have a pretty good idea of how to... Um, <clears throat> how to use the equations at this point. And the equations aren't really anything new, um, when we deal with free fall, I would more like to focus on what graphs of objects in free fall look like. So what we're going to do is we're going to make some graphs. Uh, the graphs are going to show objects that fall from rest. And this first set is going to show as if down is positive. And we're going to say that the object falls from the origin. So I've got my position versus time graph, my velocity versus time graph, and my acceleration versus time graph. Okay, And let's actually start with the acceleration versus time graph. If we're saying down is positive, we know that the acceleration an object has in free fall is the acceleration due to gravity. And that points down. It accelerates objects down. So if down is positive and the acceleration is down, then our acceleration should be positive. And the important thing about free fall is that this is a constant acceleration. Okay? It's a constant acceleration for an object in free fall. 
and there's a certain rate that this happens at. On Earth, the acceleration due to gravity is equal to, and last year you used 9.81 meters per second squared, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's on the reference, the region's reference tables. It's right, uh, right there. Okay, there's nothing wrong with using that. But in AP, and this is kind of symbolic of the focus of AP in general, um, the AP exam actually lets you get away with using a different number. In AP, we are going to use that the acceleration due to gravity is 10 meters per second squared. Now, your first reaction to this is probably, why? Why are you using 10? Isn't 9.81 more precise? Yes, you're right, but this class is not at all about precision and necessarily um, heavy amounts of mathematical problem solving. This class is about realizing the relationships and actually learning the physics involved, not necessarily how to do the math. I think you guys, um, we will focus, you know, we will do a lot of math in here. You guys will have the ability to do the math. We want you focused in this class on the physics. And saying that acceleration due to gravity is 10, number one, is still fairly accurate. Number two, it's very, um, it makes making calculations much easier so that you don't spend as much time doing the math. Instead, you focus on the relationships. So we will be going forward with the idea that acceleration due to gravity is 10 meters per second squared. If you want to use 9.81, go ahead, but you're making more work for yourself, okay? So acceleration due to gravity as an object, when an object's in freefall, is 10 meters per second squared, as long as it's close to Earth's surface. This doesn't change. The acceleration of an object does not change as the object falls, okay, if it's close to Earth's surface. It's a constant acceleration. Let's look back at our velocity versus time graph. We know that the object is falling from rest, so it's going to start down here, and we know that the slope of a velocity versus time graph is the acceleration. If our acceleration is constant and positive, then our slope of our v versus t graph should be constant and positive. So that would look something like this. Okay, And if we were to measure that slope, it should come out to be approximately 10 meters per second squared. Let's move on to the position versus time graph. We know that a velocity versus time graph, this is a, a constant positive slope. We also know that the area under the position versus, or the velocity versus time graph shows us the change in displacement. This area would be positive because it's above the x-axis. Here's our x-axis right here. It's above that. So we should be expecting the position or displacement to increase. We know that it starts, or we're saying that it starts from the origin, so it starts down here. <laughs> and the last thing that we need in order to draw this is we know that the, pos that the slope of a position versus time graph is the velocity. Our velocity starts at zero and then increases at a constant rate. That means the slope of our position versus time graph should start at zero and increase at a constant rate, like this. Okay, Just like something if it accelerates. So these three graphs all show different aspects of the same thing, different aspects of the same motion. Position versus time, velocity versus time, and acceleration versus time. But maybe you don't want to say down is positive. Maybe you want to say up is positive instead. So let's draw the graphs of if up is positive. Well, if up is positive, that doesn't change the direction of acceleration due to gravity, it just changes how we're looking at it, okay? If up is positive, then all that does is it makes us realize that the acceleration due to gravity under this reference frame should be negative. It's still constant, it's still 10 meters per second squared, in this case negative 10 meters per second squared. Nothing about the physics has changed, all that has changed is how you're looking at it, your perception, okay? Your reference frame, or your origin, doesn't change the physics, doesn't change the shape of the graph, it just changes maybe where the graph, you know, if the graph is reflected or not, where, in what quadrant it is. The other graphs are similar. Our acceleration is constant and negative. The slope of a velocity versus time graph should tell us the acceleration. If the acceleration is constant and negative, the slope should be constant and negative. That looks something like this, okay? I therefore have a negative area here. I should expect, uh, since area on a velocity versus time graph shows us the change in, in position, I should expect the position to, becoming, to be becoming more negative, or in other words, the displacement to get more negative. And I kind of, 
I kind of drew this one a little poorly. Maybe I'll, you know what, I'm going to fix this. I'm going to draw this off to the side. Here's X, here's T. We know that it's starting from rest, or starting at the origin. Um, we have a negative slope the whole time, and the slope is becoming more negative, which means our position versus time graph should look like this. Okay. So, we have graphs that look pretty similar, actually. All we did was we flipped the direction of which what was positive, what was negative, and you see that our graph got reflected over the axis. Now, you could make some other changes. What if you wanted the origin to not be where it started, but at the ground instead? If that was the case, this shape wouldn't change, but instead you would simply be... Sweat, you would be... Um, <clears throat> excuse me. If that was the case, you would be shifting this graph down here so that it curved up and hit the x-axis when it was on the ground. Um, for this graph, if the ground was the origin, you would shift this up. So the physics doesn't change. The sh basic shape of the graphs does not change with a change of reference frame or a change of origin. All that changes is, where, uh, is if what quadrant the graph is in. Um, and it, how it shifts along the y-axis. And that's something that it takes a little while to realize. But in general, these are graphs that, depending on your reference frame, could show you how an object in free fall moves. Now, before we, get to, before we go back to free fall, I do want to talk about air resistance really quickly. Um, how does air resistance affect free fall? All air resistance is, is a type of friction. Okay. Air resistance is friction that occurs because an object moves through some fluid, whether that's a liquid or a gas. And we know, because it's a type of friction, we know that all types of friction, again from our forces unit from last year, uh, what they do is they resist motion. And what this causes is if air resistance is present and you allow an object to undergo free fall for long enough, it will eventually reach what is called terminal velocity. I'll get into more detail about what that means and how this actually works when we get to the forces unit. But with terminal velocity, what ends up happening is you have an object that, mo that um, is falling. And at first there is no air resistance because it's not moving. The more it falls, the faster it goes. And the faster it goes, the more air resistance acts on the object. And there comes a point where... Um, there comes a point where air resistance, this friction, builds up so much that the, fr the force of friction, the, air the force of the air resistance on the object, is actually equal to the force of gravity pulling the object down. And if you remember anything about when you have equal forces in opposite directions from last year, that means the net force is zero, that means there's no acceleration. So let's look at what graphs would look like if there is no, uh, or if there is air resistance compared to if there's no air resistance. So here's what I'm going to do the solid line is going to be no air resistance. The dotted line is going to be with air resistance. I'm going to actually start with the acceleration versus time graph. Oops, that's velocity. We know, and let's let's assume that we're looking at this at the first set of graphs. It's falling from rest, down is positive, and the object is falling from the origin. We know that acceleration in free fall is constant, okay, constant like that. If there is air resistance, though, then that's a force that builds up and opposes the downward force of gravity, which would cause a decreasing net force, which causes a decreasing acceleration until terminal velocity is reached. Terminal velocity, again, just means the object reaches a velocity, it can't speed up anymore. It essentially falls at that constant rate after at that point. And it doesn't immediately hit terminal velocity, it's something that it has to build up to. So, with air resistance, instead of the acceleration staying constant, because this force builds up and decreases the net force, thereby decreasing acceleration, we see something like this the acceleration slowly going down to zero. Okay. Now, how is that going to change the velocity? 
if we drop something from rest, the velocity increases at this nice linear rate. If instead it reaches terminal velocity, if the acceleration decreases the entire time, remember the slope of this graph is the acceleration. If the acceleration is decreasing, that means the slope should decrease until it hits zero. That might look something like this. See how it reaches about a slope of zero at the end? The velocity remains constant. That's what it might look like. As far as position versus time goes, uh, we know that the slope of position versus time is the velocity. And if the velocity is positive the whole time but eventually becomes constant, then the slope of this graph should be positive the whole time but eventually becomes constant. Here would be no air resistance. Just kind of keeps curving up and up forever. Here would be with air resistance. Okay, and eventually we get this section where we get a constant slope. In other words, there is no change in that slope anymore because there is no change in the speed. So, we, can, we see that air resistance changes how these graphs look. It slightly modifies them. Um, we won't deal too much with air resistance, but you should be familiar with how it works. We'll talk more about air resistance when we get to forces. Next time we're going to come back, talk a little bit more about free fall, then we'll move on to projectile motion.